Good morning. <clears throat> Nine o'clock, Thursday, October 3rd, 2024. <clears throat> <clears throat> we will see if uh, anybody comes on today. Probably got myself in trouble with the Facebook bots yesterday. <laughs> Hi, uh, Philip. There you are. Good morning. <clears throat> oh, Mr. Adam. Oh, it's an all guys thing. All right, Philip and Adam. Let's have a great discussion today. <laughs> oh, there's Carol Lee. <clears throat> we better behave now. Uh, all right. Well, good morning. It's uh, it is a good morning. Looks like the. Wind is going to blow. I should have known that. I woke up this morning with a sinus headache, and that usually is a good sign that the dust is blowing. But here we are. Um, <clears throat> yep. Uh, so it's coming out <clears throat> out there in western North Carolina. <clears throat> and Eastern Tennessee, that uh, showing how inefficient our government is. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. It's a uh, crazy times out there. <clears throat> it it also is amazing to me to see all of the churches that are stepping up and uh, <clears throat> doing something to help their communities. Uh, it really does bless your heart <clears throat> more than. <clears throat> what you see with this other trash. I read where uh, FEMA came into one of these small towns, and uh, this small town had set up <clears throat> out of the high school, they had set up a place there where people were bringing in uh, goods and they were distributing them to uh, the locals that lived there, <clears throat> and FEMA uh, took over and confiscated everything. <clears throat> and if you were going to help, you had to register with FEMA, and then you also, if you were to get any goods, you were going to register with FEMA. Uh, FEMA has also come out and said that they do not have the money <clears throat> to uh, take care of this disaster. Uh, <clears throat> why is that? Because they spent all their money on the illegals so they could all vote Democrat. <laughs> Our government, I do not trust our government. I just don't. I don't. I don't trust our local government. I don't trust our state government. I don't trust our federal government. They have lost sight of what they are to be doing. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> what a day. What a day, right? <clears throat> but... <clears throat> We know that in all of this, God has not surrendered his sovereignty whatsoever. We uh, can trust him. We can walk with him. And we do that every day. And that doesn't change. And <clears throat> we can shake our head at the wickedness of the day. And we can sit down and give up. <clears throat> or we can do something about it. And the number one thing that we can do about it is share, share Christ with those around you, you look at the ones that have stepped up in, in this day of, of chaos there in western North Carolina and eastern Tennessee, <clears throat> and you see it's the local churches, it's the believers that are stepping up, showing the love of Christ, and these people are going far out of their way to uh, help these people that are suffering, and <clears throat> that's the way it should be. The, uh, the Our country ought to get back to where they are relying upon family, that they rely upon their local church. The, the government was never formed and never was to exist to become Big Daddy. Never was. Uh, biblically, it's, it's wrong for that. And uh, we have become such a socialist idea uh, country that <clears throat> people are thinking that they have to have everything from the government. And people would get all mad at me, but the best thing in the world is if the government just got shut down 
and show them exactly how, how, how inefficient they are and shut them down and quit sending them all the money, the gluttonous pigs that they are, and send them home and get back to being the communities that we ought to be where we help each other and, and uh, let the churches be the stand that they ought to be taking and uh, helping those that, <clears throat> that qualify to be helped and encouraging those that need a job, go get a job and get out there and work and, and uh, help take care of yourself and your own family. And <clears throat> that's what we ought to be doing. These people that are just relying upon the government to take care of them and take care of their, their family are just, uh, <clears throat> it's wrong. It's wrong in this day. And, and I, uh, <clears throat> I feel bad for those that think that they have to have that. Uh, God is a far better provider, and we need to trust him and, and walk with him. Look at Psalm 75. I, I mean, uh, unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee we give thanks, for that thy name is near thy wondrous works. Declare, when I shall receive the God congregation, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked, lift not up the horn, lift not up your horn on high, speak not with a stiff neck, for promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south, but God is the judge. He putteth down one, and setteth up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red, it is full of mixture, and he poureth out the same. But the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth, shall wring them out and drink them. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. And all the horns of the wicked also will I cut off. The horns of the righteous shall be exalted. <clears throat> God hasn't given up one ounce of his sovereignty. And even though our government <clears throat> wants to think that they are God, and you have these arrogant characters that get voted in and look down on the peasants of this, this country <clears throat> and have become their own entity instead of representing the, the people themselves. They have put themselves in a position where they are, they're fighting against God. And we need to leave them there and, and uh, ask God to do something about it and remove them from that place and and in also in that make sure that we are telling people turn to God turn to Christ turn to the one that provides the one that truly will meet your needs the one that gives you peace the one that gives you joy and trust him and and know that that uh, God God isn't just winking at everything that's going on I mean there are <clears throat> and I know it's all conspiracy, but that lunatic governor in North Carolina has been so slow in, in responding to, to helping out. I mean, <clears throat> praise the Lord for these linemen that are coming out <clears throat> from all over the country <clears throat> to uh, get electricity restored and if they waited on the government to do that, they would be months uh, before they got it done. And some are saying because Western North Carolina, for the most part, other than Asheville, uh, are very conservative, that the governor has no no desire to hurry this up at all. Because if they, they're able to get out, then they're able to vote. <laughs> Who knows? I wouldn't put anything past them anymore. Any of the government. I mean, they seems like both sides of it, when they get in the office, they forget everything that they're to represent. And I'm just thankful for God and, and what God says. And, and uh, he is a great provider. And may I remind you guys as believers that whatever comes in, in this country, if you are walking with God, it will be okay. I'm not saying it might, it probably is not going to be easy, but it will be okay, and we walk according to God's will, and and walk according to, to God's word, and, and don't fret about evil. Look in Proverbs 24. I read this today, too. Rejoice not, verse 17 through 20. 
Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Look, that's going to happen, okay? And, and, and God is going to judge, and we don't need to celebrate that. We just need to praise the Lord for his righteousness and his goodness, lest the Lord see it and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Look, we don't, <laughs> we don't want that, all right? So let's just rejoice in God and his power and, and fret not thyself because of evil men. That word fret means getting angry and, and, uh, and, and more than just getting angry, but letting it affect you. I think that we can be angry over, you're right, Jan, our, our forefathers would roll over in their graves if they knew what's going on here. And, and Amy, you know, you, you and Dan are seeing it, that, uh, it, it's these uh, private helicopters that are in there with their own money, their own fuel, and they're the ones that are being used to save the people. And uh, praise the Lord for that. That's the way it ought to be. And, and rejoice and, and realize, <clears throat> for the most part, that, yeah, people need to be saved. I understand that. But most people are halfway reasonable and you can get along with them, and you can show love to one another and care for one another on opposite sides of the political spectrum that right now are realizing that the, the I'm sorry, but the debates don't mean Jack Diddley to these people right now. The election doesn't mean Jack Diddley right now. Right now, survival is what matters to them. <laughs> and who is it that's stepping up? It's good people, and it's and it's the and it's the local churches that are doing the work and praise the Lord for that. We do not need FEMA. We don't need the bureaucrats. They need to go home. They need to be unemployed. They need to go work at McDonald's or something. I don't know. Get them out of the office and get them out of the positions that the FEMA is just a bureaucracy. We definitely don't need it. Get it out of there. It's just wasting money. Give us back our tax money and we can use it to buy our own food. <laughs> Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be envious of the wicked, for there shall be no reward to the evil man, though a candle of the wicked shall be put out. Now it's coming. <clears throat> That's all coming. It... it, it uh, uh, we just, we need to trust God and walk with him and don't stop being the witness that we ought to be and don't walk around angry all the time, but, but truly be, <clears throat> be courageous and, and love God and, <clears throat> and stand up for what's right and stand up for what's good according to God's word. And, and, uh, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, it, it, it's all worth it, right? And this is what, uh, in Jeremiah 1, this is what God told Jeremiah. Jeremiah stood up against the country that hated him. And ultimately, the reason they hated Jeremiah is because they hated God. And they had turned their back on God. And, and this is what God said. Behold, the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. Look, th those are the things that we ought to be doing, <clears throat> and Stand according to the word of God and, and tell people the truth. And you, you never know what, what God can, <clears throat> can do. He goes on, and this one's an interesting verse. In verse 17, he tells Jeremiah, Thou therefore gird up thy loins and arise. So prepare to, to, to do business, right? That's what he, to gird up thy loins and arise. That's what he's telling us to do. And speak unto them all that I command thee. Okay, that's good, right? Lest I confound thee before them. Look, <clears throat> if one of the, I believe uh, one of, and confounding uh, has the idea of making you afraid, okay? And I believe that one sign of carnality 
is that we get really scared about what's taking place in our lives. And, and I'm, I'm not, it's okay to be afraid. Okay. But, uh, you, you don't let it control you and you face it and you deal with it. That's courage. And that's what God wants us to have. Be not afraid, right? Well, how do you do that? By being courageous and doing what God tells you to do. That's the things that, that we do. And so we get up and just like I use it all the time, you, you, uh, courage is when you're scared to death and you saddle up anyway. Well, that's exactly what we do. <clears throat> and we, we uh, saddle up when we ride into it <clears throat> and we cross the bridges when we get to them. And we don't borrow trouble and we don't look to trouble tomorrow. We just deal with today. And, and we mount up and we ride through it and we deal with it each and every day. And otherwise, God says, if you don't do that, then the, the fear is going to overwhelm you. And it does. I think we have people that are scared to death of, of what's coming. Well, you don't know what's coming. You have no idea whether you'll even be alive by the end of the day or not. So get, get over yourself and, Quit walking around like Chicken Little, thinking the world is coming to an end. God may not come for another thousand years. We don't know. God may come today. Be ready, right? Just be ready for him. And how are you ready for him? By living for him and being courageous in that. Tell people about Jesus. Tell people about how good he is and remind them of that. And, and, and uh, this is what he says in verse 19. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Now, Joel Osteen would tell you that, oh, all is going to be pumpkin spice here, and you're going to become very wealthy, and all is good. Well, may I remind you that God was with Jeremiah even when he was cast into the pit, where they went to the king and said, if we don't get him out of there, he's going to die. Uh, we need to be reminded that it might not all just be uh, pumpkin spice and, and uh, beautiful bouquet of flowers in your life. There can be some rough times in your life, but God is with you through all of it. And whatever comes, comes. We can't stop that. And so we we will trust him and we're going to walk with him and we're going to do the things that, that God wants us to do. And then, so here he is encouraging Jeremiah. Now he gets into chapter two, and this is powerful, and I don't have time to read it all, but in chapter two, the first uh, 10 verses or so, or uh, I don't know, first, I don't, what did I write down in here? First 10 verses or so here, uh, he uh well, through, even through verse 13, we have here the, an invitation that God gives to uh, Israel to repent of their ways. And moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem saying, thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the, the, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals. When thou wentest after me in the wilderness in a land that was not sown, God says, look, I remember when, when things were fresh and, and uh, the relationship was what it should be. And, and uh, maybe that's where you guys, some of you need to get back to. Maybe, I think we all need to guard against this where, where we become embittered by, by the pressures of the day and, and we, we uh, become angry about how things are going and we, we walk around in seeing all the injustices and uh, almost mad at God because he hasn't dealt with it yet. And uh, I mean, some of those things and, and, and in here, you know what you need to get back to? You need to get back to the freshness of your salvation. Get back to the freshness of a, of a sweet fellowship and the relationship that you have with your savior. And, and that's what he's telling them here. He says, you need to get back to this. And, and even he says here, even the priest said not, where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me and the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. I mean, so many had turned away and, and be careful of that, guys. Be careful that because of the, the things that are going on around us that 
we become more and more in our attitude like the rest of the world. But let's fight against that and, and let's turn and, and remember the, the goodness of our salvation and encourage people along the way. Man, we need to do that more. And, and uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I mean, he, he goes on, he says this, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. Well, that's dumb. Don't look, guys. Don't don't turn your back on the one that hasn't given up any of his sovereignty. Don't don't turn your back on. And and if you are a saved person, then definitely don't turn away and start living like the world and thinking that that's going to bring you joy. I mean, don't don't get angry at God and think that He owes you something, and so you're just going to go out in your bitterness and your your anger and your your uh, uh, carnal lifestyle and think that God's going to be okay with that is not and and hewed them out cisterns broken cisterns that can hold no water and goes right along with it you you want to turn your back on God and walk in a worldly way then your 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 uh, uh, water carrier is broken and you're not going to carry anything and you're going to be dry and you're going to be thirsty and you're going to be useless and uh, stop. Stop. We need to make sure that we keep our attitude in check, even when all of this craziness is going on. And and uh, then you read the rest of this chapter. Uh, I, I mean, <clears throat> verse 20 through the end of the chapter, he goes on and talks about their obstinance. And their obstinance towards God, all it did, does is bring judgment. And boy, did it. I mean, they lost their country because of this. They lost it. And, and I mean, they could have stood up and had, had another uh, civil war or had some kind of a war against the enemies, but God said, mm, too late here, guys. You will go into captivity. Well, where's our country at today? Many want to call on civil war, and I'm afraid that something like that may end up happening if it keeps going the way it is, but I don't think it has to be that way. I don't. I think that if believers truly get on their knees and beg for God to do something and bring a great revival, he can turn this world around, this country around. I think what you're seeing in, in uh, Western North Carolina, Eastern Tennessee, Georgia, uh, some of uh, South Carolina, some of Florida, you, you see people that are stepping up and, and you're watching the love of Christ be displayed. That's why God blesses this country, because of those believers who are practicing the love of Christ and we we have to we have to stay focused on that guys and and watch God do something and and he, he can be a whole lot more effective than thinking a civil war is going to, to clear it out and and uh, be the the only answer that we have God is the answer and we cross those bridges as we get to them and the bridge that we've crossed right now or that we're getting ready to cross is God is saying, do you trust me or do you not? And are you going to live for me or are you not? Are you uh, going to look at your circumstances and get all angry? I, look, I read in Philippians chapter four today too, the, the joy book of the Bible written while Paul was in jail. We're not talking about a pleasant jail cell either. And he wrote all throughout the book of Philippians to rejoice. Well, let's rejoice in the time that we have. And let's rejoice in the time that we are in today and, and use it to tell others about Christ and watch God do something. Something. I mean, God's doing something. I, I look in our own community and people are searching. Let's keep telling them about Jesus. And let's keep living in a way that brings honor and glory to God Stand up <clears throat> for what's right. Be courageous. Look them in the eye. Tell them Jesus is the answer. And if they don't like that, move on to the next guy and just don't stop. <clears throat> Let's be what God wants us to be. So <sighs> it's Thursday. One more day, then you get the weekend. So we shall see what tomorrow brings. But Lord willing and the creek don't rise, we'll be on here tomorrow. God bless you guys. Let's have a great day today.